Hi, it's Amelie. Uh, and um, we're doing just practicing today. And we are going to work on the Sicilian by Gabrielle Fauré. Um, so, if you have any question about that piece uh, during the live stream, just um, ask them and I'll answer them right away. And if you have questions that are not related to that particular piece, I'll answer them at the end of uh, that just practicing segment. Okay, so that Sicilian is written in 6-8. Um, so it means there are 6-8 notes in the bar. Uh, some people are familiar with those rhythms, some people are less familiar, so maybe I'll take a minute just to explain. Whenever the do you, say, do you say numerator in English? Because I didn't do my math. Numerator, like when you have a the top number and the bottom number, numerator okay. and denominator. No, that's not how you call them, I guess. No, it's just okay. the top number and bottom yeah, top number. Yeah, bottom number. Okay. <laughs> like the beat. In and French, the, we have a like the, specific. The separate, like how many beats there are, and then how many. Whatever. Yeah. So, when you have the top number. When it's a 6, a 9, or a 12, it means that you have, um, you're have you in a bar that group beats by 3. Okay, So instead of everything being binary, 1 and 2 and 3 n, it becomes 1 and, and 2 and n. So beats are divided by 3. So really here you have 6 8 notes, but in reality, instead of seeing it as 6 beats you'll group them by three and you have two beats of dotted quarter notes so um yeah i could make a video about that eventually that specific rhythm because it's a different feeling it's a bit as if you were playing triplets all the time um so yeah that's it but if you start practicing it maybe um you should start by practicing with a metronome for every eight note. That could be a good way. Um, I think my metronome is just there. No? Mm, no. Oh, mm, it's here. No. Mm -hmm. It's never far. Okay. So, if I play it without the metronome. <laughs> Spain, hello from uh, Texas, hello from Oregon, hello from a lot of different places. Oh, hello <laughs> everyone. Washington. From all those places. Um, yeah, I'll put it at 112 just so you can hear all the eight notes, the subdivision, and then after that, so let's say that's my eight note. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's grouped by three, so Okay, so that's for that subdivision. That's Sicilian is a type of dance, but okay. Um, also, 
yeah, that piece is in, in G minor. Um, and I think that this little melancholic feel to it. Um, one thing is when you take your first breath, I think you should take a breath that's in the style of what's coming next. You know, you wouldn't take the same type of breath if you're playing a G major concerto, like you go... But if you play this and go... You know, it doesn't fit. So I would take a breath that goes with that um, feeling that I'm going to have after. And then where to breathe is uh, very straightforward there. You see, when you have a big slur, that's your phrase. And whenever two notes are not slurred, that's a good place to breathe or when you have a rest. So if two notes are not slurred, then you can make, let's say on the third bar, you have that A that's not slurred to the D. Uh, you just shorten the A a little bit. You breathe during that time and then you play your D right in time. The important thing is where the note starts. Uh, where it ends is not as important. It's important, but if you need to breathe, it's better to just cut the note before and still be on time for the next note. Yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to see. Also, maybe that piece would be a good piece to practice with the tuner because you have a lot of soft in the low register, which might be uh, might be low. Or maybe if you play that, uh, let's say you play two pieces with piano and one is a type of piece that's uh, loud and higher notes, maybe you'll want to adjust your tuning. So maybe for the other piece, you might want to tune a little bit lower, like pull out a little bit more your your um, head joint. And for this one, you might want to pull, uh, push in a tiny bit to help you with, with that specific issue. Because some pieces, you know, if I play a slow movement in between, Two movements of a sonata I might just meh, tweak it a tiny bit some I don't do it as much but when I was younger sometimes I didn't have as much control over my embouchure and the, the dynamics so sometimes I would help with little adjustments like that and then pull out for the third movement that was high and loud and uh, I think it's a good thing to do if you um I still do it a little yeah I do it sometimes when I realize okay that the whole movement is, is different. So yeah, be careful with that. Because when you tune, if you tune like this, and you play very loud and the whole piece is super soft, then you'll be tuned to play a certain way, but that's not the way you're gonna play that piece. So that's my little thing for that. Uh, when you wanna play higher, I think we have videos about intonation and playing higher, but uh, support is super important and also where you send the air so you might want to send the air a little bit higher on the on the embouchure plate so that's for the first phrase and also you, you see you have that dotted rhythm da 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 you have the dotted eighth note and then the sixteenth so yeah it's ta 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 simply that. If, if you have a question about that, you can ask it in the live stream and in the, the little box and I'll answer them right now. So I'll go from 22 if you don't have questions about that. Sforzando and the piano, so you... I don't know if you see, but I I send the air way down, so the intonation doesn't go all over the place, like going. It's very easy to do that. So the first note is too high, and the second note is too low. So to avoid that, I go to, to, like that.
might be something for um, like things to look at intonation another thing would be support because it's a legato piece it's pretty much all legato you have little da 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 but mostly it's it's um and when you have when you have staccatos in that piece i don't think they should be staccatos in the sense of staccatos in uh, vivaldi or in uh, mozart uh, they're it, let's say at bar um, 12 it's not you know it's ta 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 you want them tongued and deta detached, but you don't want them uh, ultra short and bouncy, I think. Well, I don't, so you can play it the way you want. It's just my opinion. Um, yeah, so support and making sure your airstream is very... Um, uh, your airstream is um, constant in that piece. And you have to change, go do some... Um, uh, intervals there so you have to really support when you want to go in the high register you can feel that the airspeed goes a bit faster and in order to do that I feel the I feel the support going up in my belly oh even if you sing oh you can feel it if you put your hand on your belly I don't know if you see my belly but oh and I can feel it so it's the same thing with my flute. I don't do much with my lips. Um, okay, and then the other thing that I think is important in that piece is colors. Because you have the same, a lot of the same in this, you know, same type of motives that come back again and again. In order to make it interesting for the listener, you have to change the color. And in order to do that, you can use different vowels in your mouth go a o u e let's say um you know i'm i'm also playing right now with the intonation a little bit but here i'm very you know you can hear it's more edgy almost um you know, like you talk to your nose a little bit, nya, 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 nya. but you do it in, while you play the flute. But if I want to make it very um, transparent, I go. Uh. I change the shape of my mouth. Sometimes it becomes this uh, little corridor of air that's almost closed, and sometimes I make it very open and I put my tongue at the bottom. Um, and those little changes, those little things, they change the, the color. So you can experiment with that and see, oh, in general, you don't really have to think about, I, I don't think about what I'm doing. Usually I think about it when I teach and sometimes it's, it, the person is not able to do it and I wonder, oh, oh how, how do I do it? But usually the way it happens for me is that I say, oh, here, let's change the color. And it's, it does it by itself. Uh, you know when you go down some when you go down some stairs and you go fast you don't think about every muscle involved in going down the stairs fast if you did maybe you would fall because it's a lot of stuff is actually going on while you're doing that I think it's the same when you play music sometimes you just have to let the body do its thing but if you really can't achieve it you have to also know how it, it's being done so how it's being done is that changing uh, the placement of your tongue changing when you change a vowel you change the the whole shape of your mouth inside so a o u e it's all different shape so it makes different sounds because you're the resonating uh, you make your instrument resonate you resonate with it okay where was i is there any question no yeah just no? questions for the end of the podcast okay or live stream i mean um I'll try with the tuner a little bit just to see because I think it's a big it's a big uh, challenge in that piece being in tune the whole time. So I'll start from bar 22. Ah, here. Yeah. Most of the piece you can put your 
your B foot, uh, your B, uh, B flat, uh, you can play your B flat with your thumb, except there you have to use the B and then you can either slide there or do the B flat here with the little key or here and then you can put your B flat again because you won't need to move it for a while. I was just trying to check if I was uh, okay. Okay, I see something here. Um, I think it's a big tendency to try to um, or to forget to stay in the same dynamic and to go way louder, too fast. So I'm gonna try to stay really pianissimo there and then go piano and go back pianissimo, really not change the dynamic and see if I can keep it interesting the whole time, you know, by sometimes when you say things very softly, people listen more, you know. There's a change of um, of key, so you have to add the B flat, uh, the A flat. Yeah, I'll write it down because you know when I make a mistake once, usually I write it down right away because why, you know, why um, wait and say, oh no, I'll think about it next time. I think it's uh, more efficient to just write it down. This way, I'm sure I'm going to think about it next time. Um. Now you have to tongue that high E flat in the third octave and most people get stressed and tense because they're so scared of, uh, of cracking and when you're scared of cracking there's big, big chances you're going to crack because you can't play like this. Um, what I would say, make sure the air, the all the air pressure is already built up, the tongue is ready and you're just releasing the tongue at the same time as you start blowing. So it's really that instead of um, trying to bring the tongue and the air at the same time, everything's ready you release the tongue because the tonguing happens when you release the tongue not necessarily when you hit uh, because when you release that's when the air gets there and then you get the little so that's a good trick there you should try that and when you play piano you might think sometimes we get lazy in piano and uh, in piano dynamics and we Stop uh, sustaining, you know, we don't support as much because, oh, it's piano, there's less air. There might be less air, but there has to be as at least as much support. I personally, I, I, I feel that I support more in piano because I have to bring the airstream in the same spot, but I have less air, so I need to give it speed. And so for me, when I play piano is when I think the most about supporting. In bar 29, yeah. on the 16th notes... The last two are marked staccato, but the, somebody finds that it throws them off. Do you usually play them staccato or not? Yeah, as I said earlier, 
I think those staccatos should just be seen as detached, but not as very short like you would play in Mozart or in... Uh... Usually when you play a slow movement and you see a staccato, um, you have to play it in style. And, you know, staccato, really, it can also mean just half of the value of the note. It doesn't necessarily mean very, very short. But there, I don't think it should be very staccato because... That doesn't fit with the rest. I haven't found That's much weird. in Foray's work, and when you listen to Foray, you don't hear those types of things in his music. So no, I don't think he put it there to be something completely. Or maybe different. he didn't put it there. You know, sometimes yeah. we think the composer put it there. It might be the editor. We we no, never know. We never know. So we don't have access to the whole story. So. We should just uh, try to make the most beautiful music we can and sometimes totally. that means if because you want to be respectful of the composer but the most respectful thing is to play beautiful music mm -hmm. and if you're not convinced of something you will not be convincing either so um, even when I say things if you're not convinced and you do, those things don't make you sound good then it doesn't make you sound good you try something else you know it's uh, Mm -hmm. But I would not play it very staccato. I would play it more like... Or maybe, but not, not shorter than that. The second one was tr shorter, the last one. Yeah. It was still okay, but... Yeah, it's not it's not the fast movement of the classical period. No, so no. it's only a it's only what uh, 130 years old. This piece 140 mm -hmm. years old. Yeah, so I I understand the comment because I feel the same way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm at 49, and it's the same thing. You have a high note, high register. So be confident, be calm, put your tongue, make sure you have enough air, and then release the tongue and let the air come out. Dolcissimo, it means very soft, but not soft in the way, uh, not soft necessarily in dynamic, but um, kind of gentle, very gentle. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll do it again. Um, I wanted to say something about that. I forgot. It's going to come back to me. I didn't like that E flat, sorry. breathing between those two E's, E flats at 54. I don't know. I wanted to connect those two. You know, I go, So I go a little bit softer on the second E flat, the, the lower one, the second octave one. And then I do a little crescendo there. I think it's nice. Uh, yeah. Then you have a big, um, almost an octave there between the E flat and the D on the 55. Well, it's not too bad because the high D, it comes out pretty easily if you 
if you support it's gonna go fine it's gonna go well um yeah i don't remember what i i'll go from the pianissimo at 60 60 You see at 62 you change um you come back in in uh, the first key so no more a flat so you have to be careful with that i'll go again from 60. heard something between my F sharp and my F sharp and B flat. Sometimes you know there can be a little uh, in between note that gets in there because if, if your fingers don't go up all at the same time you might get a little G there or you know you have three fingers to move so it has to be synchronized. softer there. said the important things you know uh, intonation because you have a lot of piano low notes um, so that's something you want to make sure you support and you send the air a bit higher so it doesn't sound too low um, then you have those accents and higher notes that are more um, um, that are louder so you want to do the opposite send the air a bit lower um and open a lot in the mouth so it doesn't sound too high and then you have those high notes you want to keep um the the airstream you know with a lot of support and the tongue there and then you know at 44 49 uh 52 it's loud but still you need that same pressure what else did i say that was important breathing is pretty straightforward in that piece um and then it's it's legato so support 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 and no air push you know sometimes i hear people play like this i'm exaggerating so people can hear it but you know or people start piano and then two two seconds later they're super loud so you don't get that that little bubbly feeling And then they play the whole thing super loud. Um, yeah, so that's yeah, little yeah. things, you know. Keep keep it piano. Make sure because it, when you hear air pushes all the time, you know, that's that's not nice. And giving air pushes, just something, one one straight line of air, you know, and um, yeah. And then there's vibrato. Um, you don't have to vibrate every note you can but if you can vibrate if you know how to vibrate you should uh -huh. use it in that piece um, yeah and there's also like so listen to the piano part because the piano part's very legato yeah and then match the piano i think would be one additional thing like really it helps when you actually 
yeah. understand what the piano's doing. I can you play kind a little bit. Better. I never practiced it, but I can play a little bit of the beginning. Mm-mm-mm. Beginning thing is that real big, yeah. said because you see let's uh-huh. see um bar uh, where does the piano starts playing the, t- the melody here at 10 just uh, so where you have to maybe say where oh. so you see at 10 when you do the flute does that's an accompaniment right the piano's playing right. the melody so really i will write down here accompaniment so i'm not trying to overpower the piano the piano is it's showing up there it's not the flute's time mm-hmm. it's the piano's time you just go and be a good uh, you know a good accompanist because <laughs> it's chamber music right it's all exactly. about making something beautiful yeah so that's interesting okay then um mm. yeah so you have all those things it's interesting to look at it so before we answer some questions, uh, I just want to let everybody know that we have a couple things going on. We have um, a new partnership with Sheet Music Plus. I don't know if you know who they are, but uh, sheetmusicplus.com. You can um, go to their website, and if you're looking for sheet music, they're the biggest uh, selection in the world. And if you go and use our code TFC15, or go also go and check out the link in the description, and you can get 10% off uh, your order. And that helps us out, uh, make more videos and all those types of things. And it's pretty cool. So you guys can check that out, sheetmusicplus.com, uh, if you're looking for sheet music. And also, if I'm not mistaken, I think our mm. Patreon is patreon.com slash the flute channel, where you guys can help us directly um, with the monthly uh, um, monthly funding, uh, monthly patron. Uh, for as little as a dollar a month, you can... Uh, help us make more videos and do more of these types of things with you guys and take you along the way of your flute learning uh, journey. So yeah, you can check that out at uh, patreon.com slash the flute channel. There's another interesting thing with the piano part, but you're right, we should always look at it. Totally, we have to, yeah. Sometimes it's always good I, to I, know what, the, what it does because it's a partnership. Yeah. When I don't know where to breathe, I really tend to look a lot because sometimes when you look you're oh it's right, obvious right. you know piano's yeah, yeah. not doing anything there i can take a little bit of time totally but there it's pretty obvious so i was not as tempted but here at 77 end of 77 and really at 78 you have a cannon starting there so mm-hmm. that's interesting you know because the piano does this i'll try you know when i played it it, it wasn't on in in time because i was hesitating but It's a continuation. And then the flute goes. And then piano. Yeah, da da da. Yeah, that part, right? And then they come back together. Yeah. 
So oh, those that's things nice. Are, yeah, those things are important things like, to know. Oh, piano will be something there. Yeah. So if you listen, yeah. and let's say the pianist does it a certain way, maybe yeah. you're going to want to come in yeah. in that same yeah. way, you know. It's the ensemble. React yeah. to the way the other musicians Yeah, because it's the ensemble, you know. This piece is a great six piece in the RCM, and you would never think of it. Oh, it's easy. It's just a uh, Sicilian, but... It's something that, it's really an ensemble piece. You have to make sure all the blendings are there. You just don't learn your own part and then walk into the show and then do it. Well, they can see a lot of stuff. They can see a I, lot I of can stuff. see why they put a grade six because they can see if you have a good support, totally. if you can play in tune, mm -hmm. if you can play with someone else. If it, the rhythms are not that simple. You can see the last thing at bar 84. Right. Da -da 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 -da. You have to come in. Boom, you know, mm -hmm. you have one, yeah, two, da-da-da. Yeah, da, yeah da, you have to come back da, in da, quick. Da. Yeah. It's that little... Yeah. You have to make sure your rhythm is super precise. Totally. But yeah, I can mm -hmm. see why. Because mm -hmm. nothing is that simple if you want to play it well. I know, yeah. You yeah. need the skills, you know. But there's, there's, there's certain things but, that people look at it, you know. But once you have the it. skills, nothing is that complicated either. Right, that's true. It's that... Yeah. <laughs> it, it meets in the middle. Those two concepts meet. Right. Nothing is that... Easy and yeah, nothing is that difficult. Exactly. It's just about getting the skills, knowing how it's it works, and right. then you just use those skills, and it becomes so simple. Yeah, I think. Uh, so we'll answer some questions now. Uh, um, Kevin Esquivel, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Do you have a specific warm up routine when you're like in that warm up routine? Like we like, I'm sure your warm up routine now is not what your room room warm up routine is when you were. Uh, you know, learning and no, but I know some flutists, oh, yeah, uh, me too. I know even a lot. professional flutists that have a almost two hour routine, routine every day. Yeah, every day. I don't have that luxury. Yeah, I don't have it. I would yeah. love to. And I most love don't. practicing. Yeah, I love practicing too. And totally. I used to love sitting there. It's like a meditation and do my thing. I don't have that time, so I don't warm up that much anymore. Uh, but when I Okay, what I do when I don't have much time but I still have to warm up or, yeah, I try to do simple things. I do all the notes on my flute right. with legato and really listening to my sound, trying to make it sound as beautiful as I can. So Maybe I'll take more time on the first note really to get the sound that I want and then I might go fast to... Um, I think it's a lot. Um, the biggest energy should be in your ears, listening to your sound. Because if you just mm -hmm. try to do it, but you're not really paying attention, then what good does it make, you know? Right. Sometimes um, we're not being attentive enough. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing, you know, just listen. And also, if it doesn't sound the way you want, you have to have a set of questions to ask yourself. Okay, it doesn't sound the way I want. Am I supporting well? Am I covering the hole uh, with my upper lip or lower lip? Um, am I opening my mouth enough? Am I too closed? Uh, maybe if I try, uh, you know, have a set of questions so you can fix things. Not just play and then one day you sound good, one day you don't sound good. If you know how to fix things, then it becomes easier. Oh. So I start by doing all the notes. I go all the way down, all the way up. Sometimes I do harmonics because I think it places my sound well, especially mm -hmm. in the high register. Uh, sometimes I, I play again. First time I play all the notes, it's usually mezzo forte, something comfortable. But then I'll play it again very piano because piano is more difficult and piano also uh, centers my sound more. And something like that i think mm -hmm. we have a video yeah, about we have the harmonics. Five harmonics and we also have the five minute warm-up for flutists in a hurry yeah which I you know. can actually expand you can actually just 
take that five minute thing, turn it into a 45 minute or one hour. Yeah, thing. I just I do it very yeah. fast on that thing. Plus, yeah. I've been doing those things for years, so years, it's fast yeah. for me. To yeah, do it. now it's fast. If you have to learn your chromatic scales, it takes more time. Oh, I know them, so yeah, I just put yeah, yeah, yeah. it's done. Yeah, when you learn them, it takes time. And usually, I do a little bit of articulation. I'll, now, I find it funny that teachers ask for um, a little bit of sound and then scales, but sometimes there's no real articulation work. and you know, what defines your sound in a large part is your articulation. Yeah, how you articulate, like if how you articulate, this bow, you know? Like, you yeah, know. <laughs> and even there's been, st there's been little, uh, not studies, but Recent? experiments, experiments. Okay. done. They take a recording of an instrument and they remove the attack and people are are confused they don't know what instrument it is anymore they mix mm. them up so the attack is so important the attack of the note that just changing that changes the whole timber and then you might not even recognize it that's crazy that's crazy yeah, we gotta do that type of experiment yeah we should it do people, it yeah. and show it yeah, get yeah. instruments yeah. and yeah it's it's crazy Maybe. so that's how important it is and i don't mm -hmm. think we spend enough time on articulation right and when i don't have much time i spend at least a minute. Mm -hmm. No, even if it's five notes, I'll play it slower. It's five new notes, five notes. And then I'll play with a little bit of air push. And then I, I uh, detached with air. And then ka. And then ta. And then kata. And then taka. And kataka and then takata. But really, it's about listening to my articulation. Be like, is it crisp? Is it clear? Is it the way I want it? And it doesn't need to be that many notes, but really paying attention to that. And the key to a good articulation, I think, is to support and also understanding that you have to take your tongue out. You know, the articulation that happens when you release. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, that's um, pretty much it. Mm -hmm. You know, do all the notes and yeah. And then if you're building your technique, you need to do technique exercises. Learn your scales, scales and thirds, arpeggios. If you know those, those and in three all things. The, and in all the articulations, like the yeah. core articulations. But like, I'm just talking about fingers yeah. here. But yeah, right, you, fingers, it's yeah. good to learn all the articulations. I'm, I totally agree with you. Yeah, but totally. If you know your major, minor scales, scales and thirds and arpeggios, you know a lot. You yeah, can yeah. do a lot with that. You can do a lot. It's true. Uh, for the people who are not doing a lot, Lemon Pop wants to know, for starter player, which song would you recommend for them to learn? What are good beginner songs for people that you always give to your beginner students? I go a lot in the 40 little pieces of uh, Louis Moise. Yeah, you show that. I think you have that book. You can get I that book that at sheetmusicplus.com. That out and go and use our code gfc 15 <laughs> this book here yeah 40 little pieces and progressive there's order. a lot of yeah. stuff in there yeah i have study books that i like um yeah. that are good we are actually we're, we're also writing a book, a book and the book's coming out it's going to come out that soon as well which we'll has have, 15 yeah. lessons in there some things i wrote some things, things are in the public domain and we just took well, from making uh, a book. the public yeah. domain yeah like most music we buy most is of those pieces are in the there in the public domain as well but so yeah but for real it. beginner beginner like when you have one or two notes i wrote little things yeah I know to you make did it interesting be, yeah. even mm -hmm. if you play a note or two and then right. you gradually build on what you have and build on what you have. Yeah, but it's totally. the whole thing in that book you have what i like about it by the end you can you'll learn quite a bit yeah and is every every lesson is made with a sound exercise, a rhythm exercise, right. uh, sight reading, um, technique, study, a piece. So it's so you have everything in there, and you can build all those aspects of music play, flute playing, but also music a little bit. You can build all of it mm -hmm. together because it's good. Studies are amazing for for learning. I think. I've had students that refuse to do studies, and then when they did accept to do them once one a week, their level went way higher because those those pieces are written for um, for.
for that purpose to learn so you have articulations you have different different um, um, keys uh, you know you have little patterns like finger patterns and stuff like that so I think it's good Garibaldi has some there's a lot of Garibaldi books yeah, of studies that are for yeah. beginners you have uh, Melodious Studies I think they're called Garibaldi and you have um, I think Garibaldi if you pronounce it more yeah, Garibaldi, English yeah. Garibaldi so you can check for that and there's some that are Melodious Studies uh, beginner studies like you can check and that's a good thing to do one one study a week and sight reading technique everything like l reading the articulations when you play making sure you're playing the what's written art tonguing when you have to and slurring when you have to it's a good way to uh, to get that habit yeah totally because very often people just mm -hmm. invent articulations and play when <laughs> like tongue wherever they want and yeah, yeah. I think we have only one more question. If we miss one and, and you're listening in and we didn't answer your question, try to type it in quickly so we can maybe answer it. But uh, Brenda wants to know, is the Palisonari flutes good as an intermediate flute? I think we did try some Palisonaris in our reviews. I loved it. And they're pretty good. Yeah. yeah. You can definitely go and check out uh, flutesforsale.com. And that's uh, the Flute Center of New York's website. And they have the largest selection of flutes in the world. And if you use our code TFC... Uh, you can try up to about three or four flutes uh, for up to 10 days and you can uh, choose once you choose one of them uh, it comes with an extended warranty up to 18 months and I think also free shipping as well yeah, yeah as well that's so, one of the perks yeah and that's that's worldwide so you guys can definitely check out flutesforsale.com and use the checkout code tfc or just call them and mention the code tfc and they'll get you all settled away to try and out some that flutes. also helps us which is yeah well, that helps nice. of course the code to definitely does more that more this yeah work on our project exactly exactly which is great so yeah um we have one more question i think do you find yourself spending time with a large amount of musicians well, we spend time together, uh, but uh, we, we... We used to. We used to, and then we have our flute festival, the Montreal Flute Festival, uh, which is every August, and that's uh, three days long, full of flute for everyone, yeah. and we all hang out together then. We kind of get we, a big dose. But we also met in an orchestra. Yeah, we met in an orchestra. Where we played a lot, yeah. so we were with musicians all the time. Yeah. yeah. And now... Maybe less. Less, yeah, a little less, we but we still do in, in this. this and yeah, we, we and play and we tour. And other we do projects. Because we made a choice to... You did a concert a month ago. You played a... Two months ago, you played a concert with your... With another... With your, yeah, with, with your the pianist harpist. And the harpist. And also with your pianist as well. Oh, yeah. And next week, And you have week, next I week, you have a concert as well. So, so you're in... Your, yeah, we hang out with people and play. Yeah, but we did make a, a life choice. Yeah. I feel that we wanted to make music the way we want exactly to make it. yeah totally and we want to be um the captain of our ship totally we're both co creatively of that yeah co-captains of creativity and just creating all types of different stuff i i i enjoyed playing in orchestras a lot me too but totally. it's it it's weird for me there was a time for that and mm -hmm. now some people it's forever some people it's, yeah. just, a short, it's just a specific time totally. i really loved it oh the me whole... too yeah, yeah it's and a i great still feeling. enjoy it but yeah. I don't know. I think I enjoy that a lot too. Yeah. You know? For me, even Reading, the, the whole, yeah. yeah, orchestra and even being a soloist in an orchestra, it's very, you don't get many opportunities, even in, in well, those soloist, things. So, uh, soloist, you don't get much opportunities. You don't get much opportunities. But that's know? so cool, though. But it's cool when it happens, but I mean, Plus, uh, there's so much more you can do as a, as, a, yeah. as a chamber musician. But I realize also when I play in concert as a orchestral musician, I don't get a lot of contact with the public as when i play chamber uh -huh. music or solo or people right. come and talk to me and i i really love that exchange you know right. with people and feeling that i brought them something totally i don't know but yeah playing with a group is also cool no so have, much fun and yeah. the flute is Make placed in the simple. middle of that amazing sound it, sure it's sure. uh it's very nice but yeah we uh -huh. we were hanging out with a lot of musicians yeah at that yeah, time. yeah a lot um one final question i think we got here but 
Did you say everything you wanted to say about the festival in uh, in August? Or oh yeah, no, no, you? no. I, I'm just saying, uh, yeah, you can definitely check it out. MontrealFlutefestival.com, uh, August 15th, 16th, and 17th. Yeah. Um, Alexis still will be there from Oberlin Conservatory, and Emily will be there teaching classes as well for the th- uh, for the three days. There'll be a concert, and we all hang out during the day, and then we hang out sometimes at night for dinner and stuff like that. And it's just a nice way to uh, get to know so many different people, and it's for every level of loot playing. Um, and yeah, and it's very affordable. And if you want to come up to Montreal, which is a nice festival city and very warm in August, yeah, uh, it's really cool. Also, if you want to be an auditor and not play in master class, it's a master totally class is like a cause... group lesson. With, well, this, with it, the one person performing in front of people. Yeah, yeah. but like uh, for our festival in the afternoon, it's a master class with a pianist that accompanies right. and you have Alexa still teaching and it's great. She's amazing. But in the morning, it's more informal. People ask questions. We let's say, oh, um, can you can we work on my high register? And then we work on that. And then another person, something else. Some people play, but it's a bit more informal. There's no pianist and... Um, some people last year said, I just want to be an auditor. And then they changed their mind. They took uh-huh. out their flute. So you should bring your flute. Yeah, no matter what. Even no if you're matter an auditor, what. just there to listen in. Uh, bring your flute no matter what. You never know. Because everyone is, a, is invited to play yeah. in the morning especially. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so check it out. MontrealFluteFestival.com uh, Last question. Um, do you think it's a good idea to practice a really hard song for your level instead of doing easier ones in order to learn? It depends on the person. Depends on the person. That's what I was going to say, too. Yeah. Yeah. As a teacher, yeah. I always try to find... Uh, what's the word? The... Um, right level? No. Yeah, like the point. The right level? Mm-hmm. The, the optimal the, point. The, the optimal you know? skill level? The optimal you know, that, ability? that will challenge enough, oh, but not the discourage. Most challenging. Yeah, you challenging, know? but not discourage. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Because if you put a goal that's too high for yourself, you might lose motivation. Oh, yeah. If you put a goal that's too low for yourself also, you might get, lose motivation. Yeah, so it's so a true. whole balance. And um, it depends on the person. And it depends on your age. And Because let's say you're in high school. When I was in high school... Mm. I was in a music program and we played an hour a day, an hour and 15 minutes a day. Plus, sometimes we had another rehearsal in the evening, which means I was practicing at least an hour a day. But usually I would practice during one recess and I would practice in the evening. So I was probably playing, what, two hours a day on average Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just by being in school. So I would progress way faster than someone who works full time and practices 30 minutes, three times in the week, you know, if you're in that, so I I learned fast and my teacher was making me skip a lot of levels, you know, going from a super easy thing to a Mozart uh, G major and then next year the Poulenc Sonata and then next, you know, Mm -hmm. because I was playing a lot, but you know, if Mm. if you're in that type of uh, environment and you're playing music all the time, maybe it's better to skip a little bit because you... You don't have to follow all those steps. Mm. So it's all about what's what's your sweet spot totally. <laughs> of challenge. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully that answers your question. So yeah, we do this every other week, uh, just practicing. And on the other weeks, we do the Flute Talk podcast. So that will be next week, the Flute Talk podcast. And we'll also, also hopefully have some videos coming out soon about various different topics. You can also check out us on the community tab on our channel where we do all of our general uh updates and talks and stuff like that and questions and polls and all those types of things so yeah um this was fun very great crowd thanks for taking part and if you guys have any more questions about this piece uh let us know down in the comments after the video gets uploaded and yeah and we'll do another one in two weeks so if yeah we'll you do have another two weeks yeah if you have a recommendation well, a lot of people were asking carmen the... okay. a lot of people want to hear carmen like four or five people just gave okay. recommended carmen or I or never played in the concert, Inesco. but I learned it like for yeah. fun. Yeah. Or UNESCO. What Inesco were you saying? Is beautiful. Well, someone asked for a study. And oh, yeah, the study. Anderson study. We and actually, the email yeah. was so nice touchy, and yeah, touching. Yeah, this lady emailed us. It was very nice. I yeah. think uh, I want to do it. Yeah, but... we'll do Anderson for sure. That's a big requirement for a lot of uh, all state if you're in the United States. 
It's an all. It's a specific Anderson etude. I'll that look I think into most it. Of them, I'll, yeah, I'll most see of them if are, I learned it. I yeah. probably did because in university. Opus thirty three, I, I think. Yeah. I learned a lot of Anderson. Anderson etudes, you know, they're Lots so of popular. Etudes. Oh yeah, so popular. But he wrote so many. I'm not sure, you know. He, he wrote, he wrote so a many. crazy amount. He wrote a crazy amount. Yeah. So yeah, thanks everyone. Uh, thanks again for taking part, and we will see you guys next time. Thank you.